The Gospel of Mark is very simple and straightforward. For example, on this solemnity of the ascension of the Lord, we read, So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. Let us examine this passage in three parts. Admittedly, it is hard to fully grasp the mystery of the ascension, but artists have attempted to take snapshots of this gospel proclamation. Most artists would focus primarily on the first portion of this passage of the Gospel of Mark. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken, was taken up into heaven. One of the earliest images of the Ascension is this 5th century ivory piece called the Reiterstafel and found in the Munich Museum. Here we see the dramatic Ascension or a lifting up by the Father's hand, literally, into the heavens. Other dramatic scenes show the disciples looking up in awe as in this 17th century Rembrandt version of the Ascension, also in Munich. A second part of the Gospel of Mark's depiction of the Ascension says that Jesus took his seat at the right hand of God. Again, a number of artists show something of an end result of the Ascension where Jesus sits at God's right hand, as in this fresco depicting of the Holy Trinity by Luca Rossetti da Orta in the 1700s. I like this image found in the Gaudenzio Church at Ivria in Turin, Italy, because Jesus is not on an equal plane with the Father. This should remind us that sitting at God's right hand is not technically a physical reality as much as it is a title or role of Christ's equal power in majesty. He is the Father's right hand. He and the Father are one in power. However, I was struck by the third portion of this ascension narrative by Mark. We read, But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. This passage could have easily used the words, Then they went forth. Instead, it reads, But they went forth. Other translations have, and they went forth. And and but are conjunctive words, which in this case point to a cooperative and coordinated mission. Christ is at God's right hand interceding for us, and at the same time, we are cooperating with his mission. Going forth and preaching everywhere in conjunction with Christ is the mission. The mission did not begin after Christ ascended, according to Mark, Mark clearly says, and the Lord worked with them. It is hard to find an ascension piece that shows the church on mission at the same time as the ascension. However, there is this piece by an unknown artist simply called The Ascension at the St. Mungo Museum of Religious Life and Art in Glasgow, Scotland. The circa 15th century alabaster relief shows the apostles grouped around an altar and Christ ascending, represented only by his feet and lower part of his robe. Most of the apostles are identified by their attributes, that is, their instruments of torture and ultimate martyrdom. This points to two aspects of our mission in conjunction with the work of Christ at God's right hand. We, like the apostles, gather around the altar every Sunday or every Mass to intercede with Christ that all may be one. But this intercession comes with a price where we are called to witness to the presence of Christ in our midst and along our mission, even if that witness leads to a martyrdom similar to the apostles. This means for the Gospel of Mark that the ascension is not a past event, but a cooperative mission ever present and ever new.